So what I want to talk about today isn't quite a rule because technology has advanced enough that what I'm about to describe can't happen anymore. I want to bring our audience back to the early 1990s. You know, if you wanted to know new information, news, sports mm -hmm. scores, how would you possibly learn that information? Unless you were at the game or watched the game, maybe they'd say it on the radio yeah, or you just have to wait till the next day. So everything was just on a bit of a delay. <laughs> I've never heard of game seven. I'm still on game six. So this is a, a useful frame of reference because the game we're going to talk about happened in May of 1991. Okay. So we're near the end of the 90-91 French Division I soccer season. The team hosting this game is, I'm going to try to pronounce it correctly the first time, Nancy. <laughs> it's, it's Nancy. Do French people understand that that's a funny name? Just a first name, just a casual first name. <laughs> it's like the name of like my mom's friend from dermatology school. It's like not just any, I don't, anyway. Nancy, but it's it's Nancy. They're playing host to Monaco, and Nancy are terrible. They're just trying to avoid relegation. Whereas Monaco are in second place and have a shot at winning the whole league. And while Monaco are visiting Nancy, the first place team, Marseille, is playing a game simultaneously. These two matches are going on at once, and both of these teams are inclined, if possible, to check in on the score of the other match. So at halftime of the match in Nancy, Monaco, the visiting and superior team, is actually losing. They're down 1-0. And with that partial result in mind, they're very curious about what's going on in the game involving the first place team. They take a look at the scoreboard in the host stadium, which says that Marseille over in the south of France is winning 2-0. And so that's discouraging. They're like, well, it almost doesn't matter what happens here. You know, yeah. Marseille is clearly going to win their match. If we could get a chance to take a day off to not play soccer. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah. And that's exactly what happens. I you know, I don't know if they just weren't trying, but they end up losing 4-0 to a much worse team. And it's probably because they knew they weren't going to catch Marseille that week. And so, yeah. you know, what's the point? Plus, they give Nancy a little thrill, you know? Wow, you beat yeah, the second place you know, team. Nancy deserves a thrill. Most nights she's just kicking back with a glass of wine, but yeah. she deserves to be a winner for this. <laughs> Upon the conclusion of the match, they check in on the final score of the simultaneous game, and it turns out that Marseille drew nil-nil. They had never scored two goals. Nancy had lied. Oh my god, the scoreboard had lied. The scoreboard had lied. Someone who was, I think it came down from the higher-ups at Nancy, but they passed down to the scoreboard operators to both put up on the electronic scoreboard and I think actually announce in the stadium that Marseille was leading their game 2-0 at halftime. So the plan was, all right, we're 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 trying to avoid relegation. There's no way we can do it on our own merit, but we can concoct a scheme to trick the other team into laying down. And obviously the first punchline there is that it worked. We got an easy W there. But then the second punchline is that long term, first of all, Monaco did end up in second place. They really could have benefited from winning that match. I don't know if it would have made up the whole difference, but it would have set them up differently. Nancy, meanwhile, did not get relegated, but it wasn't because they had a good enough record. They would have been relegated if it had been by points alone. But that season was a rare season where France decided to relegate teams that were doing poorly financially. And huh. Nancy got spared for that very reason. So it ended up not mattering at all for the team that perpetrated it. Yeah. I was just going to say, of course, Nancy is wealthy. <laughs> that lines up. That's top shelf red wine Nancy drinks. I mean, listen, Nancy is, she has a well diversified stock portfolio. She might have done a little insider trade. Oh, I'm just describing Nancy Pelosi, my bad. <laughs> got her, got her. How would you react were you the victim of this? Uh, livid, livid. This fucking shitty team is trying to mess with my real soccer life. They don't even play soccer. I'd be I'd be so mad. <laughs> and you have this reaction in common with one of the greatest uh, football managers of all time. So oh, that's wow. nice. Arsene Wenger uh, was the manager of Monaco at this time. He'd actually been the manager of Nancy before that. And he called this act unsporting and altogether disgusting. And it ended up with the people who made this decision to lie to their opponent got fired. All right. So as myself, I think it's cool. <laughs> I'm very disappointed <laughs> that they got fired because, you know, clever, went out on a limb, really care about your team. <laughs> They did go out on a limb, but if anything, like, if you're really committing to the bit, I think that you continue to gaslight your opponent 
after the match, which would require more effort and resources. Yeah, that's true. It becomes a bigger undertaking at that point. Like if you, I don't know, you have a, a newsboy post up outside the stadium, <laughs> like this just in. Marseille, you know, won their match and here's who scored the goals and all that. You'd have to get a printing press to get a fake uh, headline to carry them out. Yeah, you can maybe pay off some civilians to walk around being like, I listened to the match on the radio and oh, here is yeah. what I recall happening. Crisis actors, I guess those would be. Oh yeah, crisis actors. And it also leaves you to wonder like, it's not like they forced Monaco to mail in the second half. Monaco could have said, well, even though this isn't going to make up ground in the standings, we are going to continue to try to win. Right. I wonder, was it the kind of thing where they like let the subs who never get to play go out? Or were they really just hanging out on the field? <laughs> yeah, this is actually where I need to be transparent about something. I am potentially falling victim to the same issue as Monaco. You know, they trusted one source for the score. And I have to go off of one newspaper source here. This is the kind, you know, yeah. uh, Secret Base and Weird Rules are a very serious journalistic enterprise. Of course. I am basing this entire story on one article from 1991. Tried to track down more accounts of this game and found nothing. You know, I don't speak French, which makes it <laughs> difficult, but like... It's possible that this isn't true. Well, we have to believe in something. <laughs> but Monaco believed in something, and look what happened to them. Oh, good point. If this ends up embarrassing me, I swear to God, Seth. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm going to pin everything on you. <laughs> well, that's part of part of the problem with 1991 there, right? If there was technology, there'd be a million, you know, little sites uh, regurgitating the same article. Um, that would be helpful this point yeah and they would be in english but english hadn't been invented yet that's right english was just before the cell phone i think in a world where technology had not advanced you know nowadays at halftime the monaco side would just look at their phones to find out what the score of the match was but if technology had not advanced to that point fifa for instance could get around this issue this potential pitfall by just making a rule where like you get to do multiple versions of the same game if monaco is not thrilled with how the second half went they can just do it again a few times oh just a do-over rule a simple do just a, you know get a few versions in now we're gonna try really hard like now let's do a silly one and then just like picking a photo it's like this is the one we're gonna commit to as like the record yeah i don't want to um shoot you down it just seems like it might be hard for both sides to agree on one just because okay i mean mm -hmm. All right, I'm gonna keep thinking about it. This is weird rules, this isn't good rules. Oh, my bad, sorry. <laughs> yeah. It's the name uh, of the show. Excuse me. Uh, okay, yeah, a quick do-over rule. I think what pops to mind for me for like not trying and then deeply regretting it, uh, was it's perhaps not the most relatable, but when I was pregnant, I didn't um, research C-section at all because I just convinced myself like that wasn't gonna happen. So I researched all the other stuff and you know, there's so much to learn and it's enough already. And then um, having a C-section and having no idea what's happening to you. I knew a little bit. I know it's the old saw the woman in half trick essentially. But, <laughs> is that what it is? is it, I need to do my research too. <laughs> essentially, that was my uh, conclusion from there. But uh, I think it is, if anything, a more grave and uh, much more dramatic example of the phenomenon we're describing and it's going to be really fun for the animator oh now. that's so. true that's true i think that that's pretty similar to coming in second in the french league yeah that was actually the other arsene wenger quote was he was like this reminds me of a c-section yeah <laughs> period end of quote no explanation necessary everybody gets it